Hello everyone and happy Red Day. Uh, my name is Andrew Hockrattle and I will be your host and guide for the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenges. Today we are ending out our first week of challenges. This is challenge number five. Uh, technically it's challenge four because we had an intro day, but we'll call it challenge number five. If you've never joined me before, hello. I'm a brand identity designer down in Southern California and uh, you can follow me here on Behance at just hawk.co, H-O-C-H-D-O-T-C-O. Let's go ahead and hop in. We are doing challenges this week and next week, and I want to show you the ways that you can get involved. Uh, first of all, we definitely want you to join our Discord. Uh, that is just bit.ly slash AI Discord, and in the Discord is the place that we're actually hanging out at the end of each stream. So we'll be going there for the last 10 minutes of this stream, uh, doing a live Q&A, hanging out with any questions that you have or anything that you are struggling with. The other resource that I want to show you is the challenge page. This is where you can get all of your resources at behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator. And if you scroll down today, you will get the add text to designs. Today, you kind of need the source file, um, but it would be great if you had it. Uh, you can also work on a blank artboard today. There are a lot of assets in there for you. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and jump in to Adobe Illustrator. And today we are talking about my favorite thing, and that is type. So we're gonna be working with type. I'm gonna show you the integrations with Adobe fonts, as well as the touch type tool. We'll also be reviewing a couple terms uh, that you need to know as we get into the idea of working with type. So let's go ahead and hop in. Today we'll be almost exclusively using the type tool. So what we're going to do is we're gonna hover over here right underneath the pen tool and grab the type tool. We're gonna to click there and as we click and drag out, watch what happens. It's actually going to create a rectangle for us and that looks great. This is what's known as area type. And it's known as area type because you are designating an area for that type to go into. Now when I release my click, boom, uh, you can see that it fills it with type. Now this type is formatted all kinds of wrong. So let's go ahead and fix it. What we're gonna do is we are going to open up our character panel. If you don't have that, you can go to window and then come down here to, uh, where are we? Oh my goodness, type, there we go at the very bottom. I forgot how letters worked. And then open the character panel. If you want to as well, you can just hit control or command T to bring up this uh, here. So the first thing that we're going to do is work on the size and the size of the font is just that, how big or small the font gets. We can click here and use the arrow keys to go up and down to make it larger or smaller. You can also type in a number. So we're gonna type in 24 and hit enter, or you can click on this drop down and bring it all the way down and we can see, uh, let's do 36, that looks good. Now, the next thing that we need to do is, it looks like the space between the lines is a little bit too much. Key term here, that is called letting. Letting is the space between lines and the way to change that is to go over here in our character panel and we can click and select an option. You can see as we drag down here, it's going to give us options and 36 looks pretty good, um, but I wanna set it at 38. So I'm just gonna double click in there, type in 38 and hit enter and it's a little bit more on that letting. Now, the standard for letting is two points more than what the size of the font is. That will allow it to be a little more readable so things don't get too tight. Now, the next thing that we wanna look at is this, and this is called the tracking. Now, there are two different things uh, that are options here, and you may have heard them back and forth. There is tracking and there is kerning. So the important parts, uh, and I'm gonna zoom in here, just hitting Z and using the zoom tool. So the important part to know between the difference is this is the tracking. On the right is the tracking. We're gonna go ahead and set that to zero. And you can see the tracking is the space between all of the letters. So the tracking is between all of the letters. If we set that to negative 10, it's gonna pull them in just a little bit. Now, the kerning. The kerning is something that is between two characters. So they're not interchangeable. Tracking is the whole box, all of your text, and kerning is just two characters. So if we come in here and let's go ahead and do a problem pairing. So I'm just gonna type A, V, and Y. There we go. So A, V, and Y, a uh, very problem pairing as they say, which means that the letters are uh, hard to put together. 
So what we're going to do is we're just going to select the A and the V. And then over here in the kerning panel, we can go ahead and set this to zero. And you can see that it's actually pulling it across so that if the kerning was not set, it would make it so that it looks a little bit wonky. But if we bring this down to auto, it's going to auto do that for us, or we can change it to optical and it will make it so that it is optically correct and not mathematically correct. So kerning and tracking, two different things. Um, you can change those interchangeably though. All right, so let's go ahead and de delete that. And with that, we've learned about area type. The next kind of type that we want to learn about is point type. And this is where we're going to be making our logo. Um, and this is something called a logo type. A logo type is just that. It is type that is used as a logo. And one of my favorite things in the whole wide world is saltwater taffy. Let's see if we can get you a good, a good view of that. Uh, saltwater taffy is always on my desk. I absolutely love it. And so today we're going to be making a logo for a company called Daffy Taffy, uh, which basically just means silly taffy. So we're going to use the point type tool here by hitting T or grabbing the type tool on this side. We're going to click and then we're going to start typing out our name. So we're going to type out Daffy and then Taffy. And I just hit enter there to go to the next line. So from here, we can use the transform tools like scale using uh, the S tool, which is scale. And we can click and drag to make this larger. We also can use the panel over here to make the type larger. But as we do that, you can see that it's not changing the letting as well. So we'll have to change the letting there as well. Now, we can also work with alignments in the paragraph tab, which is right on the other side of the character tab. We can center align, we can right align, we can justify. For now, we're going to do a center align because I think it will look nice with this logo. So we're going to zoom in here one more time. And I'm going to go back to the character panel. And instead of doing all of these settings, I'm going to use a great tool called the touch type tool. And the vibe and feel that I want with this logo is going to be kind of fun and crazy and zany. And so I want to space these a little random and maybe rotate them a little bit. So I'm going to click on the touch type tool with my point text selected. And watch what happens. It says, click on a character to start. Sounds good. I'm simply going to click on this D that's happening here and I can scale this up. I can also rotate this if I wanted to, and it's staying within the type that I've created. It's using that point type. So here, maybe let's do this and just go through each of these letters and we can rotate them, change the side. If we want to, we also can drag them so that the alignment is a little bit different. And it's basically making it so that these are shapes, but it is staying real type. So I'm going to do this and really play around with how these letters format with each other. Looking kind of fun here. There we go. A little bit too big. All right. So that looks good to me. Pretty fun. And then at the bottom here, let's go ahead and change that as well. So do a little bit of that zany craziness using the touch type tool. And here I'm thinking through how I'm going to format this. And I think that I'm actually going to change uh, the letting on this text so that it isn't as close. So we'll do that there and it looks good. So from there, I can grab my selection tool to so just click out and you can see this is all still live text. So maybe if I wanted to add something in here, maybe I want an exclamation mark. I think that would be really fun at the end. I can grab the type tool and I can still click into this point type and add an exclamation mark. And you can see that it pops it up and adds it in right there. Now that looks good, but again, I want it to be a little more spaced out top to bottom. So I can simply come in here and change the letting. Uh, and maybe we want to go up to, let's say 120. So I'm just going to type 120 in here. There we go. And it's pulled it down a little bit. We also can click and then hold shift and down and it will change that by 10 degree, uh, 10 point increments. So that's looking pretty good to me. Uh, pretty fun. We're going to go ahead and scale that up. And now we have a fun little Daffy Taffy. Now, if we want to change the color of this text, we can also go with the type tool and we can click and drag over a color. So maybe let's do uh, some primary colors using our swatches panel over here. Um, actually, let's just get crazy with it. Let's do orange. Let's do this nice little green and then maybe a blue. Uh, let's do that blue. 
So looking pretty fun here, and we're just gonna cycle through these colors to make it so that it is crazy and zany and just the funnest taffy you've ever seen. Uh, and as we do this, I think maybe we want to do an option that is a different font. So I'm gonna show you the integrations of Adobe Fonts into the program of Adobe Illustrator. So with this, let's go ahead and put one more color in here. There we go, orange. And then this last one will go to that fun green color. So we're going to make a copy of this, hitting Control C and then pasting with Control V. And because this is all live type, we can come up to our character panel and just click on this drop down. And the drop down is going to give you all of the fonts you have. It's going to give you a whole bunch of fonts. And the great thing is with Adobe fonts, if you want to find more, you can click on find more. It will give you this list of a whole bunch of different fonts that you can use. So here I do want something that is a little bit thicker and maybe something that is still a sans serif. So let's click on sans serif, which means without those little pointies. Then we're going to go to something that's a little bit thicker. So a heavy weight right here. And maybe I want something that's a little bit wider. So we're going to click right here on the wide. And here you can see that it has sampled all of the different fonts that fit that description. Now the fun thing, check this out. If I select my text, and then go back into that find more. As I hover over this, you'll see that it is keeping all of my touch type formatting, as well as showing me a preview for the different fonts that it could be. Uh, I saw one that I liked, this one. So this looks great, and I'm gonna click on this little cloud, and the cloud will allow it to activate, and it will download from the cloud, Sensei technology floating in a million tiny pieces above us, and allow us to use that font right in the document right away. Right, super fun. So you can see it has those little arrows and once the arrows turn into an X, you can see that that font is activated and we can click and now we have, oh, let's try that one more time. There we go, we can click and now we have that in all of the different, whoa, all of the different family. <laughs> this, this is a, a mega font. Um, and we're gonna do this right here and that looks pretty good to me. And maybe we uh, get feedback from the client and instead they want it to say uh, Taffy Daffy. We can simply come in here and grab the type tool again, select this and type in T for Taffy and then D for Daffy, uh, change those around and then come in with the touch type tool and make any other augmentations that we want to play around with this logo. Yeah, it looks pretty fun. There we go, works for me. So now we have a couple versions of this logo, uh, very quick and very easy using Adobe fonts and using the magic of the touch type tool. So play around, create something awesome with the type tool, create a type based logo. And then what I want you to do is right here, put it in discord, bit.ly slash AI discord. You can put it in the challenge tab under feedback. That's what will give you feedback, will help you out. And if you have questions about any of the things that we just covered, be sure to join this Discord and go there right now. Uh, we're about to hop over and do a live Q&A with me. We're going to give you any insight that you want. Type is huge. There's going to be a whole bunch of questions. So hop over into Discord and join a channel. So what you're going to do is once you click on that link, you're going to scroll all the way down and go to voice and live and click on hangout and feedback. Uh, we'll be there literally in 10 seconds. So go hang out right now, go over, go to the go to the link right over there, right above my head, and I will see you in the Discord for some live feedback on the type tool and making a logo type. We'll see you tomorrow. Oh, actually, we'll see you next week on Monday. Bye.